I live in Osaka, Japan, and often use the subway to go to work in the morning. One day when I was waiting for the train, I noticed a homeless man standing in a corner of the subway station, muttering to himself as people passed by. He was holding out a cup and seemed to be begging for spare change. A fat woman passed by the homeless man and I distinctly heard him say, Pig. Wow, I thought to myself. This homeless man is insulting people and he still expects them to give him money? Then a tall businessman went by and the homeless guy muttered, Human. Human? Well, I couldn't argue with that. Obviously, he was a human. The next day, I arrived early at the subway station and had some time to kill, so I decided to stand close to the homeless man and listen to his strange mutterings. A thin, haggard-looking man passed in front of him, and I heard the homeless guy mutter, Cow. Cow, I thought. The man was much too skinny to be a cow. He looked more like a turkey or a chicken to me. A minute or so later, a fat man went by and the homeless man said, Potato. Potato? I was under the impression that he called all fat people pig. That day at work, I couldn't stop thinking about the homeless man and his puzzling behavior. I kept trying to find some logic or pattern in what he was muttering. Perhaps he had some kind of psychic ability. I thought, well, maybe he knows what these people were in a previous life. In Japan, many people believe in reincarnation. I observed the homeless man many, many times and began to think my theory was right. I often heard him calling people things like rabbit or onion or sheep or even tomato. One day, my curiosity got the better of me and I decided to ask him what was going on. As I walked up to him, he looked at me and said, Bread. I tossed some money into his cup and asked him if he had some kind of psychic ability. The homeless man smiled and said, Yes, indeed. I do have a psychic ability. It's an ability I obtained years ago, but it's not what you expect. I can't tell the future or read minds or anything like that. Then, well, what's your ability? I asked eagerly. The ability is merely to know the last thing somebody ate, he said. I laughed because I realized he was right. He said bread. The last thing I had eaten for breakfast that day was toast. I walked away shaking my head. Of all the psychic abilities someone could have, that one must be the useless. But did you notice the horror of this story? To play Blue Baby Blue, you have to go into the bathroom on your own, turn off the lights and lock the door. Then you stare into the mirror, hold out your arms like you're rocking a baby, and repeat the words, Baby Blue, Blue Baby, 13 times, without making a mistake. If you do it right, you will suddenly feel the weight of an invisible baby in your arms. The baby will get heavier and heavier as it grows larger and larger. You will feel it scratching your arms. Before it gets too heavy, you have to quickly take the invisible baby, flush it down the toilet, and run out of the bathroom. If you don't do it fast enough, a hideous woman will appear in the mirror. She will yell, give me back my baby, and scream loud enough to break glass. If you are still holding the baby, she will kill you. Some people believe the woman is Bloody Mary and she murdered her own child when she shattered a mirror and used a piece of broken glass to stab him to death. According to the urban legend, a group of girls found out about the blue baby story and decided to try it out. They didn't believe it would work, so they sent their friend Laura into the bathroom on her own. She turned the lights off and closed the door behind her. Laura put out her arms and started chanting the phrase, Blue Baby, Baby Blue. All of a sudden, a baby appeared in her arms and began scratching her. Laura was scared out of her wits and had no idea what to do. She wanted to drop it and run, but she was afraid of what might happen.
She just stood there, holding the invisible baby as it grew heavier and heavier. Suddenly, she caught sight of something horrible in the bathroom mirror and screamed in terror. When Laura's friend heard her screaming, they tried to open the bathroom door, but it was locked. Finally, they managed to run to a friend's house to get help. When they broke open the door, they found Laura lying dead on the bathroom floor. Her eyes had been scratched out. They couldn't move her body because something large and invisible was pinning her to the ground. A girl and her boyfriend were driving at night down an isolated country road. As they drove, the night seemed to get darker and darker. Eventually, they lost their way and found themselves driving through a densely wooded area that neither of them had recognized. Suddenly, the car started sputtering and stalled. The boyfriend looked at the gauge and realized that they had run out of gas. No matter how many times he turned the key, the engine just wouldn't start. The girlfriend began to panic because it was after midnight and they were stuck in the middle of nowhere and couldn't get home. The boyfriend got out of the car and took a look around. They were in a secluded area, a secluded and wooden area, darkness all around. All he could see were trees. There seemed to be no houses for miles and miles around. They were completely alone. The boyfriend was spooked and kept asking, What can I do? What can I do? The girlfriend was also spooked and she kept on saying, We have to do something. We have to. He then told her he would have to walk back to the main highway and get help. The boyfriend could see that his fiancée was scared, so he told her not to worry. He would return as fast as he could, but the girl could see the concern in his face. Kissing her goodbye, he told her to roll up the windows and lock the doors. Then he set out walking down the road. The girl watched as her boyfriend got further and further away and finally disappeared into the darkness. Hours passed and the girl sat shivering in the car, fearful of every shadow she saw and every noise she heard. She began to feel like her boyfriend was never coming back. Suddenly, she started hearing a loud tapping noise on the roof of the car. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. She began to panic but was too terrified to get out and investigate. She kept trying to peer out the windows, but it was too dark to see anything. Tap, tap, tap. The tapping noise seemed to go on and on. The girl was scared to death, but there was nothing she could do. Tap, tap, tap. She was forced to remain huddled in the car all night long, listening to the weird tapping sound. Eventually, she managed to fall asleep. When she woke up and looked at her watch, it was 9 a.m. But when she tried to look out of the car windows, everything was completely black. She couldn't understand what was going on. Suddenly, she heard a car pull up nearby and it honked its horn three times. Then she heard a voice shouting, This is the police. Is anyone in the car? The girlfriend sighed with relief. Just me, she cried. My boyfriend left me here alone and never came back. Okay, stay calm, said the policeman. Listen to me very carefully. Open the door, get out of the car, and walk towards me. Whatever you do, don't look behind you. The girl obeyed the policeman's orders. Even though her hands were shaking and her mind was racing, she opened the car door and stepped out. Now walk towards me, said the policeman, and don't look behind you. The girl began walking slowly towards the policeman, but suddenly she stopped in her tracks. Don't look behind you, shouted the policeman, but it was too late. The girl couldn't help herself. She turned around and began screaming in horror. Her boyfriend's dead body was hanging upside down from a tree branch over the car. 
His head had been chopped off and blood was dripping down from his neck, completely covering the car windows. Do you have a Facebook account? You know, those people on Facebook that you don't even know that try to add you. Well, I'm one of those people. It all started about a year ago. A lot of things have happened since then. I never really had any intention of joining Facebook in the first place. I didn't want to humiliate myself by letting the whole world know how unpopular I was. I was a first class loner. I barely had any friends. I hated how no one ever talked to me, people treating me like I didn't even exist. I kept hearing people talking about Facebook, and I decided to create an account. It was kind of scary at first, letting the entire world know what I was doing. I was giving up my privacy and freedom, but I thought it might help me finally fit in. At first, Facebook seemed very foreign to me. I had zero messages, zero notifications, and zero friend invites. It was just like in real life. Only this time, the whole world could see it. Regardless, I started exploring the site. I can still recall the first thing I did when I started using Facebook. Remember the game with the fish? You know that game, right? It was my favorite. I used to spend hours on it. I would buy countless fish, but I never feed them. I just wanted to watch them die. Watching fish die was so much fun. I probably would have played it forever if I hadn't received that first friend request. I couldn't believe it. Somebody wanted to be my friend. I eagerly clicked accept. It was the best feeling that I could ever describe. After I clicked on the person's profile, I saw what Facebook was really all about. He had hundreds of friends and countless status updates, all of them with at least five likes each, so I wanted that as well. I began to snoop through his friends list and I added every single person that he was friends with. It took about five hours, but it was worth it. I didn't really know any of them, and some of them just ignored me, but others accepted my request without thinking twice. As soon as I became friends with them on Facebook, I was able to learn everything about them. I passed the first two weeks adding people. Then, I added everyone they knew. Before long, my popularity began growing exponentially. People finally knew who I was. It was all so wonderful. Some of the kids at my school even started talking to me. It was insane. I began to fall in love with social networking. I became a Facebook addict. I hated not being online. The thought of not knowing what everyone was doing or what they were thinking was overwhelming. I hated the time I had to spend in school. Every hour away from Facebook seemed like spending an eternity in hell. I spent every free moment I had on the site. I began dreaming about using it and soon enough I stopped dreaming altogether. I developed insomnia, which was great for me because it meant I could spend even more time on Facebook, especially since the school year had just ended. It was sweet to be able to spend every single waking moment of my life on Facebook, but spending so much time on it allowed me to also see the dark side of Facebook. There were a lot of people on there that still refused to accept my friend request. I had sent thousands upon thousands and yet... Still, I only had around 2,000 friends. It was obvious that those people had something against me. Why else would they not want to be friends with me? Yes. Why else? There had to be a solution to all this madness, and it was obvious. Yes, it was also clear then. All I had to do was get rid of them. I still remember my first victim. Truly, I had nothing against her. She was so young, so beautiful, and so innocent. I will never forget those eyes, those piercing black eyes. The thing I remember most about her was how much she bled and how loud she screamed. I relive that feeling every time I choose a new victim. Come to think of it, I just sent you a friend request. If I were you, I'd think twice about clicking deny.
If you like what you heard, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. If you'd like to, you can follow me at Twitter. The handle is at Fuzzy Pantaloons. And I'll see you all next.